Hello everyone. I hope you are all doing well. I'm Manhar and welcome back to MSFT webcast. In this video, we will go over the steps to set up Hyper-V replica in our group environment using a self-signed certificate. As we are already aware, Hyper-V replica supports two types of authentication: Kerberos and HTTPS certificates. Since Kerberos is only available in domain environments, certificate-based authentication is our only option in our group setup. The prerequisites for this type of authentication are quite simple. The subject field of the certificate should be set to the Hyper-V server name, and the enhanced key usage should include both client and server authentication. One more thing to note: the virtual machine to be replicated should not have any checkpoints. There should only be one VHDX file available for replication. If you have checkpoints, you can merge them by using the delete checkpoint option. Check out the Hyper-V playlist for a video on how to merge VM checkpoints. We have two workgroup Hyper-V servers: Hyper-V Host 01 and Hyper-V Host 02. Ensure both servers are on the same network or can communicate with each other over the required port TCP 443. Administrator access to both servers is required. Configuring Hyper-V replica in a workgroup environment with a self-signed certificate requires several steps. Step one: Add static entry in host file. We need to modify the host file to allow resolving host names to IP addresses when working in a workgroup without DNS. Right-click on the Start menu and select Terminal Admin to open Windows PowerShell with admin permissions. Let's add a static entry in the host file. Type notpad c windows system32 drivers etc host and press enter to open the host file in notpad. Add your Hyper-V server's IP address and host name to the host file similar to this example. Save the host file and exit notpad. Step 2: Create a self-signed certificate. Certificates can be created using multiple methods. We can go ahead and create certificate using the new hyphen self sign certificate command. Adding the main DNS suffix is the prerequisites for our group Hyper-V cluster. However, although it's not a requirement, I prefer to add the main DNS suffix to the work group servers that are used in Hyper-V deployments. You should add the main DNS suffix. Using fully qualified domain names is required to use certificates. Type sysdm.cpl and press enter. Click on change. The server's host name is Hyper-V Host 01 and it is in a work group. Click on more. Under the primary suffix of this computer, enter the DNS suffix you want to use. For this example, enter msftwebcast.com and click okay. Again click okay. We need to restart the system to apply these changes and update the new host name. Check the current full computer name. It should resemble the fqdn Even if the server is in a work group, click on close and then click on restart later. Let's create a new self-signed certificate using this FQDN. Type the command new hyphen self-signed certificate hyphen DNS name Hyper-V Host 01 dot msft webcast dot com hyphen cert store location cert colon slash local machine slash my hyphen test root not after get hyphen date dot add years five. This will create a new self-signed certificate with the DNS name Hyper-V Host 01 dot msft webcast dot com. Set its validity for five years and store it in the personal certificate store on the local machine. Press Enter to run the command. As a result, two certificates will be created: one for the server with the enhanced key usage set to client and server authentication, and the test root CS certificate named Certrec Test Root. Which will by default be placed in the intermediate certification authorities store. While you can create certificates without the hyphen test root parameter, Hyper-V will not allow the use of self-signed certificates for application unless this parameter is included. Type certalm.msc and press enter. This will open the local machine certificate store. Expand personal and click on certificate. Double click a certificate to see certificate details. First time it will take few seconds to display the certificate details. Since the cert rack test root certificate is not in the trusted root certification authorities, 
this certificate will be considered untrusted. Click OK. Expand the Intermediate Certification Authority Store and click on Certificates. Open the CertTrack Test Root Certificate. Again, this will take few seconds to load the details. This certificate is also untrusted. Let's fix it. Click OK. After moving or copying the CertTrack Test Root Certificate to the Trusted Root Certification Authorities, the Service Certificate will become trusted. Copy the CertTrack Test Root Certificate. Expand the Trusted Root Certification Authority Store and click on Certificates. Paste the copied certificate into the Certificates folder under the Trusted Root Certification Authorities Store. Under Personal, click on Certificates. Open the certificate again. Verify that the certificate is now trusted and does not display any warnings or errors. You can also check its expiration date in the General tab. Click OK to close the certificate. Close the certificates window. Keep in mind that certificate revocation checking is mandatory by default and self-signed certificates do not support revocation checks. For this reason, we need to disable certificate revocation checking for test certificates by modifying the Windows registry on this server. In PowerShell, type regedit and press Enter to open registry editor. Go to HK Local Machine, Software, Microsoft, Windows NT, Current Version, Virtualization, Replication. Under Replication, find Disable Cert Revocation Check. The current value will be set to 0. Modify the value from 0 to 1. Click OK. This modification will disable Certificate Revocation Checking for the test certificate. Close the Registry Editor. The certificates for the primary server Hyper-V Host 01 have been configured. Please note that this change will take effect only after a reboot. Type the command restart-computer and press enter to restart this server. After the reboot, sign in again to the Hyper-V server using the administrator account. Step 3. Configure Replication Settings Open Hyper-V Manager. Right-click the Hyper-V host and select Hyper-V Settings. Navigate to the Replication Configuration section. Check the box that says Enable this computer as a replica server. Check the box that says Use Certificate Based Authentication. After selecting the checkbox, we need to specify the certificate. To do so, click on Select Certificate. The Windows Security pop up window displays information about our certificate. However, we suggest using the server certificate that we added recently. Click OK to select this certificate. Now, we need to select the Authorization and Storage options. In this example, we will select the first option to allow the replica server to accept VM replication traffic from any primary server that authenticates successfully. We can specify the location where the replicated VHDs should be stored on the replica Hyper-V server. Click Apply to save the changes. To allow replication between the primary and secondary servers, traffic must be allowed through the Windows Firewall. In the Configure Firewall pop-up window, click OK. Again click OK. Right-click on Test VM01 and select Start. Open Run menu, type wf.msc and press Enter to open Windows Defender Firewall with advanced security. Click on Inbound Rules. When you install the Hyper-V role on this server, Exceptions for TCP port 80 and TCP port 443 are created by default. To enable HTTPS certificate-based authentication, right-click Hyper-V Replica HTTPS Listener and select Enable Rule. Close the Windows Firewall window. We need to perform the same steps on our other Hyper-V server which we want to configure as the replica server. Let's connect to Hyper-V Host 02 using the RDP connection Enter the administrator's password and click on Connect. To save time, I have already completed a few steps on Hyper-V Host 02. As you can see, I have disabled certificate revocation checking for the test certificates. After that, I have also restarted the server. Close the registry editor. As you can see, just like on Hyper-V Host 01, I have also added the static entries in the host file for server name resolution in the workgroup. Close the host file. The host name of this server is Hyper-V Host 02 and I have also configured the primary DNS suffix for it, noting that the server is in a workgroup. Let's create a self-signed certificate. 
Copy the command from the notepad file. Right click on the start menu and select terminal admin to open windows powershell with admin permissions. Paste the copied command in powershell and press enter to run the command. The self signed certificate has been created successfully. Type certlm.msc and press enter. This will open the local machine certificate store. Expand the intermediate certification authority store and click on certificates. Copy the certrack test root certificate. Expand the trusted root certification authority store and click on certificates. Paste the copied certificate into the certificates folder under the trusted root certification authority store. Under personal, click on certificate. Open this certificate. Verify that the certificate is now trusted and does not display any warnings or errors. Click OK. Close the certificates window. Next, we need to configure the replication settings on this server. Open Hyper-V Manager. Right click the Hyper-V host and select Hyper-V settings. Navigate to the replication configuration section. Check the box that says Enable this computer as a replica server. Check the box that says Use certificate based authentication. Now specify the certificate. Click Select Certificate. We will select the certificate we just created. Click OK to select this certificate. Now we need to select the authorization and storage options. Select the first option. We will use the default location to store the replica VHDX file. Click Apply to save the changes. In the configure firewall pop-up window, click OK. Again click on OK. Open Windows Defender Firewall with advanced security. I have already enabled Hyper-V Replica HTTPS Listener rule in our Windows Firewall. Close the Windows Firewall window. The configuration on Hyper-V Host 02 has been completed. The final step in configuring replication is to enable replication for a virtual machine which should obviously be done on the primary server. Go back to Hyper-V Manager. Step 4. Enable VM replication on the primary server. In our lab, we want to replicate the virtual machine from Hyper-V Host 01 to Hyper-V Host 02. Right click on Taste VM 01 and then click on Enable Replication. Click Next to continue. Enter the name of your replica server. In our case, we are using Hyper-V Host 02 as the replica server. Type Hyper-V Host 02.msftwebcast.com and click Next. Specify the connection parameters and authentication method to match the settings on the replica server. Make sure your certificate based authentication is selected and then click on Select Certificate. Once we click Select Certificate, a pop-up window will open the details about the certificate we configured earlier. Click OK to use this certificate. By default, data is compressed but you can modify this setting if necessary. Click Next to continue. Choose the replication VHDs you want to replicate to the target server. We can select all VM virtual disks or only some of them. In our example, we only have one VHDX. After making the necessary selections, click Next. On this page, choose the replication interval from the drop-down list. Choose the frequency at which changes are sent to the replica server, for example, 5 minutes. Other available options are 30 seconds and 15 minutes. We will go with the default setting, but you can adjust it according to your requirements. Configure additional recovery points for this virtual machine. In our example, we choose to create additional early recovery points. Select the options that best fit your needs. Recovery points are incremental, file-consistent archives that don't consider the content of the memory of the replicated VMs. In the case of planned failover, this won't be an issue because the VM must be shut down beforehand, making the VM fully consistent. However, in the case of an unplanned failover, Many programs such as SQL or Exchange will lose their open transactions held in memory, rendering file consistent archives less useful. In contrast, application consistent recovery points ensures that the application will function properly inside the replica even after an unplanned failover. This is because the VSS will handle all necessary tasks related to the information in memory. Note that the Hyper-V VMM requester service must be running on the both the primary and secondary Hyper-V servers. 
Since this is a just a test lab, I'm not going to select this option. Click next to continue. On this page, choose the initial replication method for your Hyper-V replicas. If you select the first option, Hyper-V will send the initial copy over the network transferring the primary VM configuration file and the virtual hard disk file you selected via your network connection. If a VM's size is too large, you can first deliver the VM to the replica server using external media to save time during the initial replication. If you perform offline replication, you will transport the initial copy to the secondary server using an external storage medium such as a hard disk or USB drive. To do this, you need to connect the external storage to the primary server. Then, when you select send initial copy using external media, you can specify a local location or a path on the external media where the initial copy will be stored. A placeholder VM is created on the replica site. After the initial replication completes, the external storage can be sent to the replica site. At the replica site, you will connect the external media to the secondary server. Then, you will import the initial replica to the specified location and merge it into the placeholder VM. This is a somewhat complicated process. You have third option to use an existing virtual machine on the replica server as the initial copy. For this option, you can export the VM on the primary server and then manually import it on the secondary server. Then select the third option and perform the initial copy. In this example, we are going to select the first option to send initial copy over the network. Then we have the options related to schedule initial replication. We can schedule the initial replication to take place at a later time and set it for off-peak hours like late night or early mornings. In this example, we want to start replication immediately. Click next to continue. Verify that your configuration is correct. If needed, you can click the previous button to make adjustments or click finish if everything looks good. The VM data is transferred based on your settings you have selected. A dialog box appears to indicate that replication was successfully enabled. Click on close to close this pop-up window. Let me maximize this. In our case, the data transfer has begun. On primary server, we can see the VM status sending initial replica. Let's check the same on Hyper-V Host 02. On secondary replica server, we can see the VM status receiving changes. Wait for the initial replica process to complete. The initial replication has been completed. Let's check the replication health right after completing the replication wizard. To check the VM replication health, select the VM on the primary Hyper-V host. Right-click Test VM01, click on Replication, and then select View Replication Health. When Hyper-V replication has finished, we should see a message similar to this one. Replication is enabled for this VM and this is our primary replica server. Replication health is also normal. For Hyper-V Host 02, we can see it says Current Replica Server. We can check the same information on Replica Server as well. Go back to Hyper-V Host 02, right-click Test VM01, Replication, and then click on View Replication Health. Replication is enabled for this VM and this is a replica server. Replication state, replication enabled, replication mode is replica. Current primary server is hyperv host webcastcom So we can confirm that we have successfully set up Hyper-V replication for our virtual machine named TasteVM01. That's all for this video on how to set up Hyper-V replication in a workgroup environment using a self-signed certificate. I hope you found this video helpful and informative. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos on Microsoft Hyper-V and other Microsoft related topics. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Have a great day.